I believe that one of the most underrated ways to save money in today's economy is to buy things secondhand. After completing what has been one of the biggest purchases and projects that I've taken on, which was buying this investment property, it's come to my realization that there were a lot of steps along the way that have gotten me up to this point. And I talk so much on this channel about investing and increasing your income. And it kind of dawned on me that even if you did not do either of those, if you maintained the same income and you did not invest any money, that you could still be extremely well off by purchasing things secondhand. Now there's different levels of this and I've been doing this for so many years, but I've kind of realized that the reason I'm at the place that I'm at right now is because of all the decisions that I've made in the past. One of those skills that I've had very early on was shopping for value and trying to avoid retail pricing for products or services. Before Facebook Marketplace was really popular, there was Craigslist. Now I was a big user on Craigslist and in fact, that's how I done everything up until Facebook Marketplace came out and then eventually Craigslist kind of died off and Facebook Marketplace has taken over. Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist are best places to find products or services that tend not to resell very well. A perfect example of this is cars. I have never ever bought a car brand new or paid sticker price for a vehicle from a dealership. I've always tried to buy private party. One of the reason is cars are one of the greatest depreciating assets. The same goes for things like furniture. I could have dropped five to $10,000 furnishing my entire house, but instead I got away with probably doing it for about $2,000 just using things off Facebook. I've even used services off of Marketplace instead of going directly to big companies that advertise on Google. For example, I found my landscaper doing that way, as well as some other general contractors. Now, I've always said in the past that increasing your income was always more important than trying to save money because you can only save so much, yet you can increase your income infinitely. But increasing your income is not always the easiest thing to do. Now, buying things secondhand, you can pretty much take this to as extreme as you want to get, and that's what's so great about it. I talk to so many people that are so uncomfortable with maybe buying secondhand furniture or just things that they feel they need to buy brand new, but you'd be surprised at how many things I have purchased over the years that have been brand new off of Facebook that maybe someone bought and couldn't return. For example, my entire camera setup that I'm using, my camera that I bought, the lighting, the computer behind me, my MacBook. I bought a brand new MacBook off of Facebook, still in the packaging, just because the previous owner couldn't return it back to Apple. Anytime I'm about to purchase something, I always check retail and then I see if anyone in my area is selling something similar. This has saved me thousands of dollars, if not maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've adapted it to pretty much become a lifestyle that just buying things secondhand is, I, I actually enjoy it. I get a lot more fulfillment out of trying to find deals on certain products or services than just running to the store and buying something right off the shelf. But the reason I'm making this video is because the cost savings of buying stuff secondhand can be so significant over a long period of time that it could literally change someone's life. Now, yeah, there's certain things that you can't buy. For example, my Talaria Sting, that was one big purchase that I had to go out and buy brand new just because there wasn't really anything on the marketplace that was offering because it was so new at the time. But then my motorcycle, for example, that was something that I went not to a dealer to buy. I bought that private party and got an incredible deal on it. And then I had the video of my 2022 CBR 300 that I made. That was also something that was bought used off of a kid who bought it at a dealer brand new about seven months ago. Buying things secondhand is one of those hidden cost saving things. I think if you could tweak your lifestyle to maybe look at buying products or services in a different way, it can save you so much money. I probably owned almost 20 different cars and there's no way I would have ever been able to do that had I been purchasing them from the dealer at retail price. It's funny that I think the people who are in that thrifting culture right now that's actually kind of trendy is actually really smart. I love how people are able to pick out really cheap clothes and make something really nice out of it. But it's things like that that are hidden cost savings that are gonna save you so much money over time. You won't see the results right away, but I've been doing this ever since I was in my early teens. I was always buying things secondhand. And it's been so much fun for me. I've been able to save so much money, start a whole lot of hobbies, and the best part is when you buy something secondhand, the depreciation is very, very little. 
For example, let's use the car. If you buy a car for $30,000, you drive it off the lot, it's probably worth $22,000, $23,000. However, if you bought that car used for, let's say, $20,000, and let's say you didn't like the car, you want to sell it a couple months later, if you got a fairly good deal on it at $20,000, you can probably sell it for around $19,000 to $20,000 again. So you essentially never lose money, meaning you can always start a whole bunch of different hobbies. And if you get sick of something, you can always sell your stuff back on the marketplace and almost recoup all of your money. I've recycled so much money doing this over the years. And the same goes with garage sailing. I find that the things that they sell at garage sales are usually not as great, but it's that thrifting kind of feel where you can pick up so many cool little household items for very, very little money. The one downside to this is it does take a little bit more time and effort. It's much easier to go to the store, buy the product off the shelf and be done. With buying things off marketplace, you need to reach out to the buyer and usually drive out to their place. And it's a little bit more tedious of a process. So if you have a busy schedule, you have to weigh the options if the time is worth it to you or not. However, if you're watching this video, you most likely have the time to save a bit of money unless you're at such a high income level that your time is that much greater than your income. And I think this was the perfect video to make just because of the holidays coming up. After the holidays, you're gonna see a whole lot of things end up on Facebook, whether old items that people maybe got for Christmas or maybe Christmas gifts that they can't be returned now and have to be sold at, at a lesser price on the marketplace. And those are where some of your best deals are. I challenge you guys to give this a try. If you have maybe a project coming up or maybe you're decorating a bedroom, or there's just some things that you need to go out and buy, see if you can search on the marketplace, see if you can find that same product at a much discounted price, and just see how long you can make your money last you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.